All right. Hey, welcome everyone. Chris Petrie here. Thanks so much for stopping in and we are going to actually, we're going to have a great time. We're going to do a beautiful seascape scene here and uh, we're going to cover every detail that you need uh, to get this accomplished. You're going to have a great time. I'll explain in just a few minutes how you're going to want to set up your um, watercolor paper, your drawing. We're going to do the layout, a very simple layout. This one's kind of a real fun painting, not really too difficult, but it does look beautiful and it does look difficult if you're kind of looking at it you might say wow that does look pretty challenging or difficult but it is actually is not it's mostly a lot of beautiful sweeping parallel lines with the ocean water and we have a couple details like the figures here we do some very nice figures and some rocks a distant island here but all these things are very very fun to do not too difficult and um, it's all in the watercolor medium which is wonderful we can have a great time of this um, so I hope you'll uh, grab your gear and get ready or if you just want to watch and follow along by watching videos again i always mention that watching videos is an incredible way to gain knowledge with watercolor so if you're watching you're going to be benefiting automatically uh, so maybe if you had a rough day and you want to just relax and kick your feet up perfect time to just watch some videos some watercolor videos you're going to be uh, absorbing all that excellent information and it's going to make you a better painter so let's get started All right, well, we just saw the finished painting and we're excited. We're going to create this beautiful, dynamic ocean seascape scene. Uh, I think you'll have a fun time with this. It's going to be pretty simple. We're not going to uh, do a lot of like um, intricate drawing or anything like that. We're just basically, we're going to kind of create some, uh, le uh, like, let's say horizontal lines. This painting is going to be sort of the theme or like the design of it uh, is going to be horizontal lines going across the paper, leading the eye into the distance. So we're going to have a beautiful sense of three-dimensional quality in this painting. So we're going to feel like we're at the shore and we're um, along the beach and the sand and the ocean waves are coming in. And we have, we see a couple figures. We'll draw a few figures in here and a beautiful sky. So what I'll do is the first thing is let me see if I can find my ruler over here. Let me see if I have that. Okay, so I have my ruler here. Maybe I'll use my T-square. So I'll use my T-square ruler maybe. Now whenever I'm working with my palette next to me here, I, I tend to be very careful. I don't want to really get my paint and my ruler sort of mixed up. So I'll try to leave it like that. So I have a little bit of a covering over that there. And then I'm just going to try to sort of in my mind, I'm going to do some improvising here. I want to do um, just a touch of improvising of the ocean, water, the sand, and then the steps back into the painting. So I think maybe I'll just do something like this. So I will start out. All right, so maybe about a quarter of the way up the paper. So if we kind of broke our paper into quarters, four quarters, and our paper here is a seven inch by about 11, let's just make sure, or seven by 10, about a seven inch by 10 inch. This is Arches uh, satin paper. So it's the smooth, smooth finished paper, satin, Arches satin paper. It's got the pink cover on it. And um, it's a block paper, so that means that the whole paper is glued down around the outer edge of the um, block here. And there's maybe 20 or 30 sheets of paper, and they're all glued together. And this way, when you're working on this paper, if the paper buckles a little bit, once it dries, the glue that's around the paper will uh, keep the paper remaining flat and very, very tight. So once you're done painting a, a wash and the paper gets a little buckled, if you let it dry, it'll just wind up flattening out beautifully straight again and flat on your um, block here. So that's always, I use block paper a lot. It's really wonderful to work with. It's like, it's just, um, especially if you're using some, a lot of water on your um, paintings, if you're using quite a bit of water, it really is a tremendous help. So, um, so if we say we're going to, do uh, break the paper into quarters because I think quarters is going to work out really well. 
if we go over to the edge here and we say, all right, we're going to break the painting into quarters. So if I'm just looking at this, this is centimeters actually works out good for me. If I want to break this into quarters, 18 centimeters. So half of 18 is nine. So that's halfway. That's two quarters. Half of nine is uh, 4.5. So 4.5, nine centimeters. And then if we want to go another 4.5, we say nine, 10, 11, 12, 13.5. And there we have it. We have four quarters, one, two, three, four. So that's like if you're working with like um, cooking and you say, you know, you have a quarter of a cup or a half a cup or three quarters of a cup or one cup, that's sort of like the ratios. You're just looking at it from a quarter standpoint, quarter, half, three quarters, and a full. And um, what I'll do is I'll just have those hash marks over here. And once I get those hash marks on my paper, I'll just erase them a little bit just so... I can see them. You know they're there. You saw me put them on there, and I'm just going to er erase them. I don't want them to, you know, wind up having a, a major influence on the painting once it's done seeing hash marks on the side over here. But the reason I did that is because the first hash mark, uh, the quarter hash mark, is going to be sort of where we're going to have like a sandbar in this first part of the painting. So I'll take this first quarter and just sort of gently make a very, very light line there. And then I'll do it a little bit darker now for you so you can kind of see. So I'm going to do a darker line right here. And then right about not too far, maybe three quarters of the way over here, I'll just make the sandbar kind of sort of drift this way like that so this will be like a nice bit of water here that's going to kind of lead our eye into the painting and this will be the sandbar here and then maybe we'll have a little bit of rocks so we might have some rocks over here and a few more over here and we might even put some over here too as well so we're going to have some interesting darks like dark black rocks and brown brownish black rocks there uh, along this sandbar here this sandbar area and again we did make the sandbar a little bit like on an angle like this coming in like this so that our eye when we come up to the painting and we're going to look at our painting we're going to say oh wow nice water coming into the painting like this it brings us into the painting and then we're going to go through the entire painting uh you know in a kind of a beautiful um, horizontal lines stepping us back into the painting you know first it's the little bit of sand here and the sandbar and the wet sand over here a little bit of water then we'll get into like the kind of the waves coming in over here and the green ocean area and then we'll have maybe a distant mountain in the background uh, island maybe there's a little island back here and then another bit of ocean and then we'll have the sky so we'll kind of make everything really very logical we're kind of just making horizontal lines across our painting like this all the way across and we're making everything as it goes further in the distance smaller and smaller and smaller so that we get that feeling of uh three-dimensional quality of um our eyes going into the painting and we're led through the painting to the deepest farthest regions of the painting where the deep ocean is out here we're going to have an ocean horizon line back here so let's keep working on this so um right now I'm really kind of concerned about we have the sandbar that's good we have that in here so that's our sandbar then we're gonna go about another um, not quite all the way up to the halfway point we'll maybe go about I would say halfway between the halfway point and the quarter we'll have another line here and we're gonna come across here and we're gonna make this sort of where the waves and a little bit of sand along the shore is where the waves are coming in and that will be this line here going across and so you'll see I kind of make a like this I make a line like that so now we have two lines we have the first one the sandbar so it'll be kind of dark here and you did see that finished painting in the beginning and I'm hoping somehow you'll be able to have my finished painting, which I always show in the beginning of my video, I'm hoping you'll be able to kind of screen capture that or screenshot that and then have that set up so that you're working from my finished painting 
as well as working from my video at the same time. So you might have to have like a phone and a laptop or uh, an iPad and a home computer, like a desktop computer, or maybe two phones, or maybe an iPad and a phone, or a phone and a laptop, or you can kind of figure out what, what works best for you, what kind of uh, electronic devices you have. But we are so lucky these days to have electronic devices, aren't we? I mean, years ago, it was so much more difficult to try to um, get an advantage with working with artwork because, you know, not a lot of people had cameras or phones or computers and things. So now we're so lucky we have all these different electronic devices. We can really maximize our um, uh, progress in our watercolor painting because we can use these um, electronic devices. So I'm saying if you can use your and if you need help, too, you can always show this video to somebody that's really good in your family, like a, um, maybe someone younger, like a, a grandchildren or nephews, nieces, things like that. People that are younger nowadays, they have such great knowledge of uh, electronic devices like phones and laptops and computers and everything. You could just kind of explain to them that you want to sort of have a, a screenshot of the painting that we have in the very beginning of the video, the first minute of the video. You want to have that in front of you as well as you want to have this video running at the same time. Um, so if you have someone that's really good with computers or, or phones and things like that, they're going to be able to say uh, they can help you to do that. And they'll be able to set you up and make sure you can, you know, work in this fashion. You'll, you'll have such an advantage uh, doing doing it this way. So um, I don't want to keep... Um, uh, harping on these these things but really if you can use electronics like again phones laptops home computers desktop computers iphones samsung phones whatever kind of electronic devices you have try to use all of them to your advantage when you're doing artwork and especially with youtube youtube's great you can watch this video and watch step by step as we go and put this painting all together drawing it and then painting it and then if you can have the finished painting in front of you while you're working along in this video, step by step, you'll have the finished product in front of you. So you'll see what you actually are going to try to create right there finished. And then you will also have all the steps as we go through the video. So, all right, let's keep going. So we have that bit of shoreline here where the waves are coming in. And then we have another about halfway, halfway across, we're going to have the distant ocean. This is where I might take my square uh, T square ruler like this. And it gives me a perfect level line going across the whole paper. If I just rest it on the paper, on the edge of the paper, this line now becomes a perfectly level line across the paper. So it's perfectly level. It's not like this or like this. It's perfectly straight right across even. That's what we want for that distant horizon line where the distant ocean is. So now we have the distant ocean. Now, um, I think we can... Well, we'll do the figures last, but let's get a little more detail over here. So right now, I'm going to do a little bit of a uh, bit of some hills coming down into the water. So this is like a uh, coastal area where you have the hills coming down and meeting up, meeting up with the water, the uh, the ocean, the coast right there. And then I think we're going to have back here. We're going to have um, an island. Isn't that great? That's really so pleasant, having a nice, gorgeous island back here. And we're going to have this in the painting, too, and that's going to look really good. And then that island is going to also um, trail down into the water so that you'll see the edge of the island, the coastal area, right where it meets up with the ocean there. And this might be a little bit closer to us. So maybe the ocean horizon line is there. So we might make this a little bit lower here, like that. And I think that's about it. Here, we could go with another line um, even further back, just by a little bit. So I'll take that t-square ruler and I'll make another line just a little bit further here so that we're going to see another line here and that's going to be the very very 
distant ocean, that, li that line that we're going to do now. Just like that. And if I, for some reason, if your line isn't 100% good, you can put your ruler back down again. We make sure that we have that like that. All right, perfect. All right, so we have pretty much everything now. Um, we're drawing and we're working hard. We're concentrating. That's why I always say, please take a break every once in a while if you're doing your drawing and you find you're starting to um, get a little bit fatigued, a little bit tired. Um, you know, don't feel like you just got to keep grinding on and on and on with your drawing. Take a break. Why not to do it? Grab some water, grab a drink, a nice tea or a cup of coffee. Sit down if you're standing up. If you're sitting down, maybe you're going to stand up and walk around a little bit, stretch a little bit. But I think breaks are really important. They're really tremendously important. Some of you may not need breaks. I can't say that everyone has should have breaks. Some some people don't. You know, I've seen many artists. They don't take any breaks. They just feel fine working through their whole drawing and painting at one time, and that's that's okay too. But um, I find I need breaks, so I mention it. So if you need a break, take a break. If you don't, we'll just keep working uh, on the painting and drawing. And so we'll just come back in a second. I'll get the um, figures situated over here in the uh, middle distance. And I think I'll do in the distant cloud. I'll do some cloud shapes, just a little bit of pencil lines to give me a little guide of how I want to make my clouds in the sky here. And then once we do that, then we'll be ready to paint. So it's going to be a fun time here. Um, I think um, I will spritz the, before I always paint, I just like to spritz the paint a little bit with some fresh clean water and a spritzer bottle just to keep those paints moist. And um, we're going to be ready to paint in just a few. I just want to get those last few pencil um, notations on the paper, the figures, and also some of the cloud formations. I want to just maybe draw a few pencil lines for the clouds. So we'll be right back. Ah, okay, we're back and we're doing some more drawing before we get into the painting. And uh, I'm trying to get myself in the mood of thinking of the paint, the watercolors, the sky washes, the water, uh, ocean colors, the beautiful sand colors, all of everything. This, maybe being at the ocean, I'm trying to think in my mind what it would be like to be here in this scene, kind of just watching the waves coming in and uh, just seeing a beautiful day. So I'm here and I'm going to start working on my figures first. Let me uh, kind of situate those figures right about over here. I think right about here would be good. If I can get my figures sort of right, right around there, that should be fine. So maybe over here even might be good. I could even move this back a little bit maybe. So maybe I'll make the sandbar a little bit back this way. And then maybe the figures are here, so I'll do two figures. I kind of start out with a carrot shape. And then a small bit of um, indication, uh, like an oval for the head. And I'll make these dark. I'm going to make these kind of like a darker paint color, like a dark brown with blue, green. And then maybe this figure over here is... Um, maybe this figure is here. Maybe it's a smaller figure here. Maybe a child. Maybe we'll make it a larger figure. We can do that too. We can make it a larger figure. It's up to you how you want to create your figures. You can make two adults or three adults, a child. You can mix it up however you want. Um, but I think that's fine. And we'll have a little bit of a... Um, reflection in the water of our figures. Reflections are really fun to put into the water. 
and um, so we have our island here with some trees there and then I think I'll maybe make some clouds coming across this way and I don't worry about it if there's some splashes on my paper when I start out I'm not too worried about it I like splashing for texture on my watercolor painting so I don't mind if there's some splashes from a previous time when the my watercolor pa paper might have been out and I splash some water on it or something or some paint I just leave it on there it's not gonna bother me any and uh, we'll just do some clouds coming down so maybe we'll have the clouds kind of coming down here like this so we'll have like a larger cloud formation up here coming down this way and kind of smoothly just transitioning down into the sky here and we have our beautiful horizontal lines that we're going to have across here for our ocean and sandbar and the uh, waves coming in and you'll see how much fun we're going to have as we do this so let's start out We'll do this uh, painting in the a la prima method. We'll do the darks first. And I think that's the best way to do it. We'll do the darks first and then we'll put in the lighter washes. So the darkest washes I think are really the uh, distant island here. This distant island is the is one of the darkest darks in the painting and it's the largest one. So I'll get uh, going on this. So it's some French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. I'll try to mix up some darks, some green, uh, sap green. And I think if I can just take all those colors and just sort of put them out on the palette and then maybe just give them one or two little mixes around like that, that should be fine. And then maybe, uh, maybe we'll go with a little extra burnt sienna there. And I'll just take my, this is a number four um, travel brush, Da Vinci Maestro travel brush, which is an excellent brush. It's um, it's a natural hair brush, so it's got a really beautiful um, feel for, for for paint. You know, paint on the paper. It really puts down the paint beautifully. Put some raw sienna there too. We could even go in and get some straight paint like this. And then over here we can even add some um, ultramarine violet, a little bit of a purple color, and uh, French ultramarine blue, so kind of a purpley blue. That's probably good for over here, maybe in the distance. So the island is a pretty good size island, so you'll see that maybe the further distant portion of the island might be a little bit lighter in color, and it might have a little bit of a purple, bluish purple. That's sort of... And then as it comes down here closer to the coast in the water, I'll put the darkest dark in there, the French ultramarine blue with the brown and burnt sienna. And I'll rinse off the brush. And I often use a tissue to dry off a little bit of the water. So I'll dry off some of the water on the brush here. And I'll try to start to smooth this in like so. And we're having a fun time doing this. I'll pick up some more of that burnt sienna there. I'll maybe add a little bit of water to that.
and I'll try to smooth that out across the way here. And I think a little bit of green is going to look good in here too. That's denoting some trees, vegetation. And I might just do a little bit of like a tree kind of shapes at the tops of the hills here. Very, very very subtle, but if I put a few of those kind of like tree top shapes like that, that makes it look much more believable that there's some that there's an island here and there's all kinds of interesting tree shapes here like that. I wouldn't go incredibly detailed with that, but just a few little small indications of some treetops here and there might work out really good. And I try to smooth out a few if there's too many of them. Sometimes it looks like a little bit too much exaggeration of the trees on the tops there, so I, I'll blend out a few of them. So I kind of put them in. If they look like there's too many, then I just blend out a few of them. And then I can make more of a sharper angle, maybe over here on this mountain area here. And the same thing over here. Let's going to get some of that purple color. And then maybe some of the brown and blue and burnt sienna too. I'll take some straight burnt sienna right out of the palette and go right into the painting. A little bit of green too. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll probably leave the figures to last, even though they're pretty dark. I don't want any of my watercolor or, or my water washes where the ocean is and the ocean waves coming in. I don't want those to. Um, affect my figures. So if I'm going to do my figures pretty dark and they're pretty small, if I'm trying to paint in water over here where the figures are, um, if the figures are painted first, then you ha we have the risk of the figures getting wet from the washes over the top where we're trying to paint in that water here and reflections and things. So it's best off to leave those figures uh, to the very, very last bit uh, of what we paint when we're doing this painting. That's for sure. I've, From experience, I kind of just know that that's my best bet is to let the figures be the last thing that I paint because they're, if I put paint on there, darker paint, and then I start painting washes of ocean color, it could be that they get reactivated and they start to blur and it becomes a mess. So I... I will do that. Let's let's do that. Let's leave the figures till the very last. So now we have the mountain, the distant mountain completed here and over here as well. And I think that's a really excellent start here. Now I think next I'll do the water. So I'll take a brush. Maybe I'll go with like a number uh, eight 
um, travel brush. Uh, these are the um, um, Charles Reed um, travel brushes. You can get these in a set of three. I usually buy them in a set of three. I've, I've only had to buy them once because they last a, a long, long time. I've had this for these. Mm, these are uh, Kalinsky Sable brush hairs. And um, I'm trying to think who makes these. A Skoda makes these, the travel brushes. They work fantastic. So what I'll do is, um, let's uh, see. I'm going to take my, my eraser, my kneaded eraser, which is those gummy, gummy erasers. They don't make any crumbs. So these are really, really nice. And I'll just maybe take a little bit of um, pencil lines off there. So I think what I'll do is I'll take some cerulean blue for the ocean colors, maybe some French ultramarine blue as well. A little bit of that green mixed in is going to look good. Maybe a little bit of viridian too. Maybe I'll use viridian over here. So maybe I'll start out here with some Viridian green, which is green, like a, like a turquoise green. And I'm just going to start to go across here. Ah, oh, that looks so good. The colors of Viridian green. And I'll just go right past where the figures are, like that. Then I'll come back with a damp brush. I'll just dip my brush in the water pail and grab some more paint like this and just come across here like so then we could make a little bit of some reflections so we could do a little bit of interesting water like this and a little bit more viridian green maybe through here so I'm just trying to get those good really interesting long parallel lines horizontal lines going across the painting and then I think over here cobalt blue and French ultramarine blue and then maybe a little touch of um, burnt sienna. And what I'll do is I'll try to get the distant ocean out here like so. And I'm going to try to leave a little bit of white paper along the coast there. Then I rinse off my brush and then I maybe like that. There we go. So we can kind of see we're making some interesting waves we'll leave that some of that white paper for the waves coming in some darker darks here and there and you just take your time
you blend some edges if you have to here and there and uh, maybe we'll add some raw umber a little bit of uh, red a little bit of ca uh, red you could use burnt sienna and um, alizarin crimson uh, a little bit of purple too I would uh, ultramarine violet and then some more blue and let's see if we can get a sandbar kind of looking wash here kind of a grayish mix there like that that looks pretty good some purple in there and I would go pretty I would go pretty quick here I would not take too much time to get our sandbar in here and then uh, sometimes just doing it quickly it, it looks better than trying to fuss with it too much I think that looks pretty good I'll get some more of this here and I try to make the brush strokes the way of the the sandbar maybe a little bit of uh, raw umber there a little more gold color for sand and then I'll go with a little more of the um, blue and green just to kind of tie in the colors with the rest of the painting a little bit of burnt sienna A little bit of sand texture splashing there and then some more blue and green here blot up a little bit if there's a puddle that forms with too much water okay and I think those larger brush strokes over here look good because this is the foreground so the foreground you're gonna see things look larger and then as you go into the distance things become smaller so we're gonna see everything kind of get smaller in size so the waves are going to look a little bit smaller as you go into the distance and of course all the way out in the deepest parts of this ocean here that's going to be the most where you're going to see very little detail it's kind of like that okay so we are almost there let's do a few more things that we can think of um, we'll do the clouds next but we're gonna take a quick break I think it's really good to um, again take breaks I'm gonna sit down for I'm standing up when I paint uh, for my YouTube tutorials so I will definitely sit down take a quick break and when I come back we'll let's work on the uh, clouds if does that sound good we'll work on the clouds um, and um, sky colors and we'll blend that right down into to where it meets up with the uh, distant ocean horizon line and we'll have a completed painting only other thing we'll have to do is we'll put in our figures we'll do a very very bit of fine tune painting we'll use maybe our needlepoint brush or a very very small small rigging brush rigger brush to get a, get our figures into the um, this part of the uh, sand sand and ocean area right here and once we have that done and the sky done we're, we're all set so we'll come back in just a minute
All right, so let's get started. Now, what I'd like to do is the sky wash now, the clouds and the sky uh, colors. Um, so I'm going to get even a larger brush than we were using. So we were using like a number eight uh, travel brush. Now I'm going with a number 10. This is a Raphael um, Kalinsky Sable, uh, Sable brush. Um, and it's quite large, you can see, the brush hairs. So I think this is going to really help us to get this um, cloud formation and some of the sky washes in quickly. We don't want to really, um, especially with smooth satin paper, I'm using satin paper here on this painting and satin paper is a little more difficult uh, to work with than other papers because it's so smooth, um, the, it really dries fast. It dries quicker than like rough paper. So whenever I'm working with satin paper I always know I'm trying to use uh, the largest brushes I really can or think I'm going to need. So um, I'm going to take some fresh clean water and I'm going to put that onto the paper where this cloud formation is here. Like that. So I'll put some fresh clean water on the paper to start with just so I have a little bit of, of a head start. And then a little bit over here too. And I'll just dampen the paper in a few locations but I want to sort of keep it Another thing I can do to keep my um, mountains from becoming um, uh, inundated with water from the sky wash, I can take a very small brush like this, like a number four round brush. And what I can do is I can take a um, damp brush, just a damp brush, so I take a little bit of water off that brush, and I just make a little bit of a line just above the tops of the mountains. And what that will do is that will keep the water from running down into the tops of the mountains because we did some fine trees and things on the tops of these mountains so if you just make a little bit of a line a damp brush with a little bit of water in it and you just keep a damp you make a damp line just above the mountain areas this island here we're going to keep the the damp water line here just above maybe about an eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch above that mountain top there on that island and you can also do the same thing too with the ocean you can make a damp line on the paper just above the um, ocean distant ocean line and what that will do is again it'll help keep the sky wash water from flowing down into the bottom of this painting here where the water is so I'll take the um, fresh clean water again add a little more to the cloud formation here and then we'll do the cloud formation so I'm gonna have some green and some of this and a little bit of um, burnt sienna maybe too I'm trying to repeat the colors that we have in the painting already like that so I try to get that bit of that nice kind of grayish colors with some of the earth tones in there and the greens and blues like this that looks pretty good then I'll take some um, cerulean blue and I'll maybe and maybe some cobalt blue too and then maybe I'll make a nice uh, a bit of sky color just drifting this way like that and you can kind of see how as I paint across here none of that paint is flowing down on top of the mountains maybe there's a little bit of, a little bit of violet and blue that tends to look good in the sky a little bit in there too I'll keep the sky light though. I don't want to go too dark with the sky. And as I get the water on the paper, then I might notice that I always like to um, clear a section of my palette now and just put a little tiny touch of orange on there and maybe even some of that raw umber. And then I'll get a little bit of, the, of that golden color along the 
the horizon line. So right along where the sky meets the ocean. I just want to have a little bit of that orange mix. Just that very, very little bit of orange paint or raw umber too works fine. There we go. And then if I have to, I can lift up a little bit of paint with a paper towel or a tissue along the tops of the mountains. If it's starting to, if the water is flooding down into the mountain area, you can just do a quick little lift up. And then I'll do some more sky color here. Blue and that little bit of purple. And then some cerulean blue. And then a damp brush just to blend these two together like that. The sky color and the clouds. You can always go in a little bit too and do some blotting for some clouds if you want just to add some bit of that cloud feel Okay, so now, and I experiment too. Sometimes when I'm painting, I just do things I've never done before just to try it, see if it works. So I'm just taking some tissue and just sort of like kind of using it like a brush just to get a little bit of movement in the sky. That looks kind of good. And uh, what else do we want to do? We want to do our figures, so let's get those figures in. And I think maybe a few rocks along this uh, sandbar here. I think we wanted to do a little bit of the rocks. We'll use our very fine pointed um, needlepoint brush. So I'll get some burnt umber, straight paint, no water, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt sienna, kind of a mix of those three. And then I'll have my uh, tissue, I'll grab another tissue, clean tissue, and dry off a little bit of the paint off the brush. And then this way it's not too much, because we're doing a very, very small figure here, or two, or three. So let's not flood that paper out with too much paint. So then I'll get my figure on there, kind of do it like a carrot. And maybe I'll get a little more burnt sienna there. Raw umber. Maybe for this figure it's a little bit lighter. And then maybe we'll just get a little bit of a lighter bit of wash. Again I'll dry off some of that 
on the brush. And I'll just maybe try to see if I can get a little bit of a reflection there in the water. And then sometimes I might uh, just use my pencil and just make a little line through there like that. And then maybe a few more uh, darks for the um, rocks and things over here. So maybe we'll do some rocks. And that kind of looks good if we can make a little bit of... Um, notations on the paper like notes so sort of so to speak that kind of match this so that we have some little bits of um, darks that sort of match the the um, figures and the other darks and we could even do a little more over here maybe there's another bit of rocks that come over here like this like that and that tends to look good if we can kind of do a bit of small bit of ornamenta uh, ornamentation as we go you can make some rocks they tend to look squ squarish like sharp edges, rocks, and then some of them have rounded, rounded edges too, but they look good if we can make them kind of jagged looking. Rocks tend to look jagged and, uh, and then round too. Some, some shapes are round. some dark darks maybe we'll add a little green to this and blue green and blue maybe and maybe we just have a few little bits of darks under the waves Sometimes that looks good too, just to have a little bit of that dark bit of tonal value that kind of just ties everything together. And then over here in the distance too, I think that looks good if we can get some of that dark, dark, dark here along the very, very distant ocean. Like that. And we can also do a little bit of splashing here. So that's always good if you can get a little bit of splashing by the sand over here. And um, we can also use a bit of splashing um, with some titanium white paint. We can uh, use some titanium white, titanium white paint with our brush. What I'll do is I'll set this down over here I'll, I'll take a bit of paper towel and I'll just do a quick spot here so I'll just maybe just clean up a tiny spot there on my palette or I can put a little bit of the uh, titanium white without getting it too I'll empty my water pail make sure I have fresh clean water for this I always mention that if you're going to use titanium white to make any kind of like smoke effects or water effects where you're going to do some splashing of water 
Um, you'd want to have crystal clear water, very clean water, so you'd want to empty out your bucket, maybe scrub around the bottom of your water bucket with a paintbrush, an old paintbrush, scrape, you know, kind of scrub around on the bottom of your pail, your water pail to get all the sediment, everything out of there, clean the water pail out perfectly clean, then put some nice clean fresh water in there, and then we come over and we take that titanium white, add just a little tiny bit of water into it because it doesn't need too much water and then we can do a little splashing with some waves here not too much I wouldn't do too much but a couple little splashes like that of white paint give the painting a feel of there's some water splashing around that looks good then I would also um, take a little bit of um, raw umber or yellow ochre and put that in the top of the tube of titanium white just a little bit to warm up that white because titanium white is basically a stark white it doesn't have much tint to it so if you add a little yellow ochre or um, raw umber to it or even a little bit of cadmium orange but just the tiniest bit of, of, of color into it just to get it a little bit warmed warmed up then uh, I would take my tissue and then dab a little bit of the white off the needlepoint brush that we have here so we have our needlepoint brush and then what we can do is we can just add a couple highlights too to our, our figures here. Just the ever slightest bit of um, some highlight on top of the, um, the figures, the tops of their heads maybe. We just add a little bit of white to give it that little bit of light there. Like that. And maybe, you know, I'd have to take off a little more paint, white paint on a tissue just so I don't have too much on there. And then maybe I'll do their shoulders a little bit like that. So their shoulders like that. And that looks really good. Maybe another bit of highlights there on the rocks. But I wouldn't do too many. I would just do one or two over on the rocks and then just maybe a little bit on the tops of the figures, their shoulders, and maybe the tops of their heads. If one doesn't come out good, no big deal. You can take your tissue very carefully and blot up like that a quick blot and start over again and maybe just be more I'm going to be more careful now like that there we go that looks better and uh, I, we'll call that a finished painting I mean if we wanted to we could do something a little bit uh, interesting even further let's maybe make a, a sailboat Maybe we'll have an interesting sailboat in the distance. So we'll just use a little tiny bit of paint like that. And maybe we'll just pick a spot and say maybe over here. Like that. And you can even go a little darker. Maybe you can pick up a little more. Like that. And that should dry quite a bit lighter. If you add some additional water to it with color in there, it'll dry pretty light though. Looks a little bit dark right now, but it'll dry lighter when that'll give it that really like beautiful distant feeling like it's out in the far distance a beautiful sailboat um, cruising along in the ocean and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video I always mention if you like working with uh, uh, our channel here doing what creating watercolors drawing and painting in watercolors uh, if you subscribe on the right hand side below it's as simple as that this means you'll just next time you're on YouTube you'll just see that our paintings uh, our videos will be on your uh, home page when you open up YouTube that's just YouTube's way of saying if you like a channel and you like working with me and with everyone here, we're doing our watercolor paintings every week. If you do happen to really enjoy this channel, you'd want to subscribe and you just click on the subscribe button and there's usually little um, bells that you can click on, the notification bells. And if you click notification bell on the very top one, that means that each time we create a new video and we're creating usually videos every weekend, maybe two or three. Uh, sometimes we'll do them in the in the middle of the week as well. Um, you'll just be notified, so you'll get that little um, 
notification when you open up uh, YouTube and it'll say there's a new video by Chris Petrie and uh, you can join along with us. You can watch if you don't have the time to paint necessarily every time. You can at least watch. Watching is incredible. Um, most uh, artists will, professional artists will say that if you're watching a lot of videos, it's definitely tremendously helpful because you're kind of like in a more relaxed state and you're just absorbing the information um, as you go. And then you'll kind of be learning things as you're watching. So if you're busy and you can't have the time to break out all the gear and the brushes and the paints and all that, if you're watching videos, you're going to be uh, really successful because that's really a, one of the top ways that uh, all professionals and sports and uh, any any profession especially sports they watch tons of film all the time to learn um, from what is happening during the games when they're playing so they can in retrospect look back with what was happening they can look at other great teams maybe and see how they're doing things and then how they want to adjust their game plan to do something a little better so watching videos is a great way to just learn more about watercolors and have a, a great time of it too because you're more relaxed you can just sit back and watch and absorb all the um, interesting uh, information and it's also beautiful you're seeing all the colors and the brushwork and all the fun so i'm um, always encouraging everyone please watch as many videos as you can um, by your favorite artists i hope you'll always stop by here too as well and be watching along and painting along with me and uh, we'll see you on the next video thanks again for stopping by and painting with me and we'll see you soon